And this week, something special. It's hand painted. It's been rubbed on the inner thighs of a nubile wench. It's the 2020 Golf R. So I've got a bit of paper that tells me what this golf has, and I'm going to read it so I don't bugger anything up like I normally do. We have 19 inch black Pretoria wheels, carbon Napa leather appointed upholstery, gloss black door mirrors, a killer Dynaudio sound system, which believe me, the cameraman will agree, sounds absolutely fabulous. The final edition, R badge, but apart from that, it's all standard fare. It's still got the 213 kilowatt, 380 newton meter, two litre turbo engine, which is absolutely, a, it's a peach. The seven speed DQ381 Wedge Class Clutch DSG. Now, as you know, Volkswagen got into a bit of strife with their DSGs. They were the dry clutch ones. They kind of self imploded when people tried to drive them like an automatic. Uh, we don't like that. Of course, it's got four motion. VW Group's all-wheel drive system. Uh, it's the same system that's used elsewhere, Audi and so forth. Uh, electrically adjustable driver's seat with memory function. LED headlights with dynamic, cor dynamic cornering lights. And dynamic light assist. We have the R body styling kit. One of the few options that you can get is this paint. So it comes in three colors, viper green, and this purple that is iridescent. It is absolutely sensational. But I actually quite like this. I think it looks absolutely smashing. And inside the back, funnily enough, despite the fact that this is just normal old family hatch, there's a mountain of room in the back and I can get my feet right under the seats in front, which makes for a really good long trip. There's plenty of headroom to get in and out as well, so you don't bump your head. And just in case you like a little bit of privacy, look at that. The privacy glass is really, really dark. And this, just in case you're in any doubt, is the carbon Napa upholstery. The driver's seat has the uh, electrical adjustment with memory. Uh, I'd like that on the passenger seat as well. This is one of those particularly clever Volkswagen dashes. You can have any number of views on this you like. For example, you could scroll across to the navigation system. You can have the navigation up on it. It is really sensational. The main driver data goes to smaller displays with a bar across the bottom with the essential safety information. And in the center console, this is where a lot of the really cool stuff happens. There's a gesture control infotainment system. In the normal home screen, a lot of the auxiliary information disappears until you put your hand close to it and it all comes back. Of course, this system has Apple CarPlay. And now the system is connected to my maps and is very fast to respond. Of course, you can handle your messaging, your voice, phone calls, etc., all hands-free. Below that, we've got dual zone climate control with the four motion badge, which I think is very important. Uh, again, there's quite a lot of shine on that. Piano black makes for a bit of a tough time, especially at sunset, when you've got the sun coming straight in on those highly polished surfaces. Uh, below that, we've got the all important mode button. This scrolls through the driving modes from eco, comfort, normal and race. And then there's the individual which you can program to your particular needs. Alongside the shift, we've got the off button for the stop start, which drive me bananas. Traction control off, leave that one on. Parking distance control, electric parking brake and auto hold. Put that on and the brakes will hold you in traffic. And behind that, we've got what used to be called the cigarette lighter, now we call the power outlet. A couple of cup holders and a not very generous centre bin. Steering wheel is so nice and easy. Anyone that's driven a Golf in the last decade will recognise this. Audio controls are across the bottom. Cruise control over here, including the distance to the car in front, which you can set using the set and resume buttons goes up by 10 using the plus and minus button goes up by just a couple. 
and over on the other side the controls for the driver's instruments. There is one thing that I think is missing, I really wouldn't mind a heads up display. Although some would argue with a digital driver's instrument panel, you don't need a heads up display. All in all, I think this is a really a fabulous car. Let's get it out on the road. So, so life started off with those Golf Mark 1s in the GTI format, continued on through Mark 2, Mark 3, Mark 4, Mark 5, Mark 6, Mark 7. And at some stage we picked up the first of the R's. And it was when Volkswagen decided that it needed a little bit of extra warmth. Now the R32, did you say you'd had an R32? Yes, I had the at Mark some 5 R32, which was a 3.2 litre VR6. That R32 probably had less power than what this does as a four cylinder. Yes, it did. It had less power, it was a lot heavier. Um, it had a gorgeous engine note, but uh, when they decided to downsize in 2012, was which when the ARCs came out, yeah. Yeah, I think it was everyone was sitting there going, oh no, you've just killed off one of the best cars Volkswagen's ever done. Um, but now this, I put it to you, is a better car. Yes. You're buying one. Yes. <laughs> so, there are a lot of things about this car that are absolutely brilliant. We've got the latest uh, iteration of Volkswagen's infotainment system, which includes Apple CarPlay, of course, it has done for a long time. It takes a lot of stress out of driving. You can handle everything by voice. Not only that, you have maps on the screen. We've got Waze on the screen, so you can have Waze, Google Maps, Apple Maps, I mean, a this, bunch the, of maps. The Discovery uh, Pro, which is uh, the, the system, has uh, built-in maps Navigation, well. yep. Navigation, yep. it's got the swipe controls. Now, on that note, when we were sitting in the car before you saw the map on the screen in front of the driver, that's only if you're using the car's inbuilt yeah. navigation system. So it won't work with any of the Apple applications. So the main, the main thing that we've enjoyed is the really sweet engine. It just revs and it wants to keep going. It's sitting at five or 6,000 and it feels like it wants to go on to 25,000. It's just brilliant. The other thing is the modes we have had it in individual for at least part of the time. We've had it in a race. But unfortunately, race around town is really just far too rough. Yeah. I love the Teutonic Germanness of the interior. I like the kind of square look of it. I like the fact that it's neat and tidy and ordered. I like the fact that this is centered and flat and it doesn't have bits that poke out. Well, we had the Touareg recently and it really is a brilliant car and that's kind of where Volkswagen's heading with the digital dash, digital center console, putting as much as possible on that infotainment system so that it takes all the buttons off the console. The steering is almost psychic. Yeah. You feel, you go over the road in undulations, but it's not rough and you can quite easily stay in normal old comfort mode and you still have a car that handles really brilliantly. The blind spot monitor works with the steering to make sure you don't change lanes on anybody. It's got autonomous emergency braking. It's got a reversing camera which pops out from the little Volkswagen symbol at the back. This has everything you'd expect in a family hatch but it goes like the clappers. Yep. And, and now that we're behind, I'm not sure if you can pick this up, but the, there's mood lighting in the doors and on the <laughs> scuff plates. That's Tron Blue. My nephew likes it a lot. Well, Tron I just wanted lighting. to point out that I am currently, we're sitting in a bit of traffic heading home. Got it in adaptive cruise control. Set to 80 k's an hour. Not Happy as Larry. Happy as Larry. And not, you know, two hours ago, we were tearing it up on Pacific Highway. Yep. Well, by tearing it up, we got to 110 <laughs> in about, you know, before you could blink, and then we had to kind of back off. So that's it. That's what I think of the 2020 Golf R. It is my favorite car, my favorite new car at least. Of course, my favorite car is a Mercedes Pagoda, but that's a story for another time. 
If you've liked the film, don't forget, hit the like button, leave a comment, but most of all, just there to subscribe.